I'm smoking pot, I got my dick out, and I'm thinking about you, and I'm thinking about you. I'm smoking pot, I got my dick out, and I'm thinking about you, just you. I'm smoking pot, I got my dick out, and I'm thinking about you, thinking about you. I'm driving along, driving along. I'm singing a song, singing a song. And I got my dick out, got my dick and out. And I'm thinking about you, thinking about you. I drank a six pack, drank a six pack. I took my pants off, took my pants oh, off. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm smoking pot. And there we go. Hey, guys, it's uh, Monday night. I think we missed you guys last week. Uh, hey, folks, welcome, 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 welcome to the show. This is so much fun. Every week we do this on Monday nights at 8 o'clock, and I see everybody pop in, and we have some of our regulars coming in. Welcome to Sto Stump the Joke, man. Tonight's is, uh, edition is Till Death Make Us Fart. <laughs> Why would... Why would we want to do something about death? Because it's funny. Everything is funny because we're human. And I'm sitting here in the green screen studio ready to bring on the man of the hour. Uh, please welcome my friend and funny man, Jackie the Joke Man Martling. Here he is. Hey, Jackie, there you are. John, boy. How are you? I am, uh, I am beyond good. I'm a little older than I saw you two weeks ago, but I'll be all right. You look the same. I me. look exactly, you know. Exactly. Good or bad. Good or bad. So, so death and funerals and all that is just funny. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I will start you with this because I don't know if you heard this, but a guy runs into an old friend. And he says, "Where are you coming from?" And he says, oh, "I I just buried my wife." And the guy says, "I I thought your wife died two years ago." He says, "Well, I I got remarried." And now the guy says. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> it's Which, deathly funny. <laughs> it's very dark. It's very, you know, when my kid brother, God rest his soul, when he was a little kid, and I don't know if he was five or ten, but he was way too young for this. And I think I came home from college, and my mother said, tell Jimmy that here he buried his wife. And, I, and he's a little kid. And I said, Jimmy, I hear you buried your wife. And he said, had to. She was dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old W.C. Fields. It, it's not like W.C. Fields. But a six-year-old kid, you know, <laughs> had to. She was dead. I, I was thinking today that uh, someone told me a long time ago that masturbation is better with a dead arm. And I, and I, and I hear that's really true, but apparently I ruined that funeral. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a great joke. I know you'd like it. That, sure. that, that, that's the old, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, put, exactly. the rubber, put the rubber band around your wrist, right? Or something no, like what's, that. The rubber, what's the rubber band around your wrist? I'm sorry. Well, that cuts off the circulation. That, that, that dulls the sensation in your hand so you don't think it's your hand. <laughs> oh, it, also, okay. it also can make your heart stop. It's not a good idea. Not a good idea. The, great, yeah, I, the, greatest, the greatest death joke is the three guys kneeling in front of the, uh, their best friend's casket and the first guy says you know when i when i go i want people to say he was a nice guy he was a good guy everybody loved him and the second guy says well when i go i want him to say he was a family man he took care of his family took care of everybody in his family and the third guy says when i go i want somebody to say 
I think I saw him move. <laughs> <laughs> He's still alive. Wake him up. Wake him up. Wake him up. I think I got this joke that I think you're going to like because you've told the joke for years, and I think this is the same joke in another format. You ready? So right, guys, well, just go. I think you're going to like it, and I think you're going to use this in one of your email blasts. So I, uh, a kid says, I wish I was Batman. And a genie goes, boom, grants him the, w the wish, just like that. And when he gets home, both of his parents are dead. That's funny. That's very dark, but that's very funny. You know you know about the guy standing there and all of a sudden he sees a, a funeral procession? Okay. And, and there's, there's the hearse. And uh, behind the hearse is a guy with huge Great Dane. And behind him is a, about three or 400 guys walking single file. Okay. So he says to the guy with the dog, he says, well, who's, in, who's in the coffin? He says, oh, my wife. He said, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, what happened to her? He says, a dog, this dog here, my dog chewed her to bits. <laughs> right. And the guy kind of feels bad and, he, and to kind of lighten things up. He says, <laughs> Can I rent your dog? And he says, get in line. <laughs> <laughs> That's the long line. Everybody wants to rent the dog. It's a wife joke in the end. A wife joke. They're all wife jokes. Dead I wife love the jokes. wife jokes. They're always great. Always good jokes. Um, hey, how about this? So um, I, I don't know if I, I guess I guess this is uh, decently to do. So this kid, this is the one I said you you use later. So a kid, this kid says, but mom, I don't want to see grandma. And she says, shut up and keep digging. <laughs> now that joke doesn't that joke really the one with the I've the been toilet? starting all my Feldman shows with uh -huh. mommy mommy and those mommy, are mommy, mommy. Mommy. mommy mommy can I play with grandma no mommy mommy can I play with grandma no mommy can I please play with grandma shut up or nail the casket back down <laughs> <laughs> what was the one today I used one today I did Feldman today I called him with some great jokes today and uh, one great. was uh uh Mommy, mommy, grandma's on fire. Shut up and get the marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, there's a ventriloquist joke like that where I used to do years ago at the dummy where you say to the dummy, when, when I was doing kids shows back in the 80s, I would say to the dummy, uh, you're a good boy scout, right? If you're a boy scout, what are you supposed to do? He goes, I don't know. I said, well, what happens if there was an accident and the cub master fell into a hole and burst in flames? What would you do? And he goes, I, would, I, I guess I would get out the marshmallows. That was the line. And I go, yeah. I said, why would you do that? And he goes, before he went out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a kid's joke, really. That, that, like, I know, of course. Old dialogue, old dialogue, beautiful, beautifully written. I love the old two one punchy stuff. It's a, it always it always kills. And guess who's out there tonight? Charlie Fisher is out there again. I see him uh, out in the I don't know if I don't I don't have a link for him yet. Let's see. There know, he is. The jokes, jokes date themselves, uh, because this this uh you know, so many times there's a reference that doesn't work anymore because people have no idea what you're talking about. But what do you get when you cross Lassie with a pit bull? <laughs> okay, what do you get, Jackie? A dog that chews you to bits and then goes for help. <laughs> 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 but I don't think anybody nowadays knows that Lassie went for help, you know. No, I, I well, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I never heard the joke, though. It's a good joke. I never heard it. But you, you're old enough to know who Lassie is. I watched Lassie as a kid. I'm not that. I'm not that old. I'm not that young, rather. You know. Jesus. Uh, what? Hey, hey. I wanted to ask you too uh, a couple of things here. I had some of these pictures that I pulled up here today, and uh, I'd like you to tell me if you know. We're going to do more jokes, of course, but I wanted to, you to tell me. Hey, what's the deal with this photo, Jackie? That was uh, one of the, you know, we used to go to Los Angeles uh -huh. for either the Grammys or the Oscars. Or for whatever reason, and we'd pro you, that was probably at the Roosevelt uh, Hotel, and one of those things where they'd set up a table for each uh, each station, you know, like the Rochester station and the New York station, the Cleveland station, whatever, and they'd be around the perimeter of the room, so celebrities could could come in and go from station to station to station and be on the air in a million different places, you know. It's it says here on Little Richard came on when he came on, that had to be nineteen ninety. And and he already was a million years old and he was so fun and so vibrant. He looks kind the guy looks great. Look at him here. Oh, you know, he, he always had the, the makeup caked on. And you never knew whether he was 
had just found Jesus or whether he was full of coke or whether he had a young boy inside his pants. <laughs> he, this... cha he changed uh, He changed course many times, but he was so great. He was so it great. It says Stern L.A. Greg Little. Stern L.A. Greg is what the name, what the photo name is on there. Well, that that's probably who took it. Greg. Maybe ah. Greg, that might have been Gary's friend. I don't know. That's oh, no. a great shot. And, and, the, and with little Richard right in the front there, it's so much fun, you know. Somebody just said, uh, here you go, here you go. What's the most sensitive part of your body when you're jerking off your ears? Because you don't want, <laughs> want to get caught. I did that. I used to do that on stage, but like, you know, looking around, you know. <laughs> pulling. I did that joke. The joke I did on Feldman today is uh, what's the what's the best reason for jerking off? What is it? So the second one takes a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to waste so a good one on somebody. <laughs> oh, there's an old classic joke where uh, Pinocchio says to Geppetto, he says, Papa, all, all my girlfriends complain that they keep getting splinters. And he says, well, well Pinocchio, just, just use some sandpaper. And then a couple of days later, Geppetto says, Pinocchio, how, how you doing with the girls? He says, who needs girls? <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that one. I never heard it. Your That's mind is amazing. One. You could That's you always remember one. all this stuff. I can't imagine. I mean, like every and you, but you know, without a flub, you kind of get the whole thing. You flow through it. It's beautifully written. Stays in your head. Very good for the you. Guy says to the bartender, "Today I jerked off into a National Geographic magazine." Okay. The bartender says, "Man, are you weird?" He says, you know, that's what my dentist receptionist said. It's the same joke over and over and over. Yeah, somewhat, somewhat. I got people on the sides here going, my aunt used to poke and cackle at me at weddings. You're next. They stopped doing I started doing the same thing at funerals. That's another classic great that's, joke. Oh, yeah, that's so great. Classic that's great so joke. Great. Very, very cool joke. You know about the, the, the story about this uh, the famous heart surgeon died? So mm -hmm. all the doctors from all over came because the guy was very famous and very, you know, did a lot of good for all the communities. And they're all at his, at his, at his wake. And at the end of the wake behind him is a huge heart made out of flowers and the heart separates and the casket rolls back right. into the heart and the heart closes back up this one guy starts giggling like crazy <laughs> and the guy next to him says what's so funny he says i i'm just thinking about my funeral i'm a gynecologist <laughs> <laughs> i didn't see it coming i don't see it coming there's a there's a i got this one there's a uh, a dying mother talks to her son on a deathbed and the mother says she goes before i die i have to tell you something you're a dot and he goes i'm adopted and she goes, no, you're adorable. And the son goes, whoa, thanks, mom. And she goes, that's why, I that's why I chose you when I went to the adoption center. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. good. That's good. good. That's good. Hey, I got another picture I want to ask you about, if you don't mind, because I got all these shots from even last time we spoke. Look at this. That's uh, now that is a who's who. Did we show that yet? No, we didn't. And Le I, I left and right, that's Harold somebody. Uh, who I think was a Catskill comedian a billion years ago, mm. uh, and then, and the next girl is the the one that I should absolutely know, and I don't. Oh, well, that, is she the one that does the imp impressions? Uh, do do uh, uh, do do uh, oh, damn. Okay, I, I don't. I, know. You know, I'm not. I think I know who you're talking about, and I don't think that's her, but it might be. I'm okay. Not sure. And then then we got Soupy Sales. Soupy and Pat Cooper. Pat Cooper. Ron Shear. No, Stewie Stone looks like he's next to Pat. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ron Shear is on the pool table. Ron Shear. Yeah. <laughs> right. On the pool table. <laughs> uh, Stewie Stone. Dick Capri. Dick Capri. Yourself. Jackie Martling. Scott Blakeman. Not okay. Scott Blakeman. The next guy is. Uh, oh, you know. Uh, I don't know those Bobby, two guys. On the end. Bobby somebody. And he's a good comic. He did a lot of stuff. He's a good friend of my friend John DeBellis. I always get lost with his name, but he, he, all great guys. We, we roasted soupy. Oh, is that what that was? 
Yeah, it was that was great, great fun. Wow. What a great what a great shot of who who's in comedy. You know what kind of year that was, you think? <clears throat> Nineteen um uh oh, roughly. Eighty eight or ninety. You know what? We did two different roasts up there. That might have been we might have roasted Rhonda. No, we roasted Soupy and Rhonda shot it. She used to have a show called Up All Night. Then yes. It, then it got taken over by Gilbert, and then I think it went to the wayside. It might even come back at some point. I didn't remember. I she was great. She's delightful. She's back on the internet, and she looks exactly the same. You know, well, she cute. looks great there. She looks awesome. Terrific. I, that redhead's going to drive me nuts now. Who the redhead is there? That's it's, it's not nuts. Carrie. It's, who is, you know, uh, I'll find out. I'll ask. Yeah, it's interesting. Know. And the guy in the left, I don't know who it is, and the two guys on the right end, I don't know who it is either. You don't know, you know Scott Blakeman. He's no, I, I know of, I know of Spot. I never met Scott. Oh, yeah, great guy. comic. Guy. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, but I haven't actually ever had the pleasure of working with him uh, all those years. So hey. a guy dies, and his wife and his friends are all at the wake, and his best friend kneels before him at the casket, and he can't take the sadness. He decides to leave, so he's walking out, and he opens the closet to get his coat. And there's his wife blowing the funeral director. <laughs> the guy says, Sylvia, in the, in the name of all that's decent, what are you doing? She says, in my grief, I should know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I was I doing a, I was doing a Jewish event uh, yesterday. And the guy and the guy told me a joke, and I I know I may have heard this joke like a million years ago, but it's it it seems to me. Um, and he did it like well, he goes so this there's, there's a young guy a young guy wants to get hooked up, and he goes to a matchmaker, which I haven't heard the word a matchmaker used in a long long time. A matchmaker, and he says, he goes he gets you. I want you to bring me a girl that's very naive. And he says okay. He brings her this girl, and he unzips his fly, and he pulls down his pants, and he says, what's that? He she goes, that's a cock. He goes, get out. He goes back to the match. I need somebody who's more naive. He brings another girl. He pulls down his pants. What's that? She goes, that's a penis. He goes, get out. Next thing that he comes back again, the next day he says, oh, I got the perfect girl. He brings her in. He pulls down his pants. He goes, what's that? She goes, that's a peepee. -pee. He marries. <laughs> On the wedding, night, the wedding night, he pulls down his pants and, she, and he shows her again. She goes, he goes, I want you to know, this is not a peepee. -pee. This, is, this is a penis. I'm a man. It's a penis. And she goes, I've seen a million of them. Yours is definitely a pee pee. <laughs> this, some Jewish guy told me this last night, a Yiddish guy, like the whole white and black whole thing, everything. I was like, like, I was like oh my I, God. Off I, I tried to tell Feldman a joke today, and halfway through the joke, I realized I hadn't really thought about it. Uh -huh. And I'm supposed to be doing a, a British guy. And I think I, I think I wound up in Nashville, and then I wound up in Harlem. I don't even know. It's such a class gold joke with him. The head of the Royal Guardsman says, Soldier, the reason you're before me is you had the plum assignment to stand absolutely still at attention for eight hours in front of Buckingham Palace. And somebody said they saw you leaping about like you were a bit daft. Mm -hmm. you explain yourself. He goes, well, you're right, I can, sir. I would stand there at attention, rock solid. A cat came up and let a full squirt of diarrhea on my boot. I didn't move. Right there, I stood still. And when that dog peed up and down, up and down all over me, the dog peed rock solid. I didn't move, not an inch. But when that squirrel ran up inside of my trousers and said, well, I'll eat one now and save one for later. <laughs> see, I can't. I must have used five different accents on my way. <laughs> I see it. I see it. You're going into Spanish brogue and the whole thing. Right. But hey, it's a people, great joke. It's people are telling joke. me in the sides here that I remember that that picture. Some uh, Sam Ash was a very you know. Do you know Sam Ash? He's a very funny guy. Mentioned he's one of the funniest guys I know. Actually, Sam Marilyn Michaels was it Marilyn Michaels? I don't think no. I all right. It might be, but I don't think that uh, Louise D Duarte. It might be. That is uh, Craig. So Craig Nine I'm got it correct. I'm not sure, but that very well might I, be Louise Duarte. That make that makes more sense. All right, that makes sense. And to Bobby me. Kelton. Bobby Kelton. Okay. 
That's another one coming, coming to us quick. Yeah. What is he saying? You need more Jewish events to hear the word matchmaker. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so, Jackie, I had this other picture here, too, I was looking at. Uh, I found, you know, I, I have a lot of pictures. I have a lot of odd pictures. Now, there's a picture here in your files of uh, from Jokeland of, of uh, Milton. Very young Milton. When, uh, when, uh, not no. Milt Rosen, when, oh, uh, what's his name? The Ed Sullivan guy died. Oh, the guy who impersonated Ed Sullivan? Yes. Um, from New York City, who did the, uh, he was the best impersonator of, uh, Jesus. Yeah, I, I, that's okay. I, I, he, I know who you're talking about. And as a matter of fact, I know my friend Bob will say it and he's, he'll say it here on the sides any minute now. I know I, I got his picture of him in my mind's eye. Uh, and, and when he passed away, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, Mike Fine. Went Will Jordan. Help. Will I Jordan. Mike, oh, Mike Fine and some people went to help arrange his things. Mm -hmm. And he had all these millions and millions of pictures. And Mike sent me some scans. There's like a picture of Rodney from like 1948 standing mm -hmm. there with a bunch of guys that you wouldn't recognize. And that picture of Milton Berle is from forever ago. <clears throat> Did I ever send you that story? No, no. The, the Milton Berle story? No. By front, you know? You know what? Yeah, I'm going to next week. You know yeah, what? Next week we'll do old comics. Okay, or, great. Or, not, not old comics. comics, legendary comics, because this guy I knew for a long time. He died when he was 95, but the guy did all kinds of millions of things. And uh, he was best friends with Lenny Bruce, and he managed Hunts Hall, and he managed an all midget orchestra and an all woman's orchestra. And he was on Ed Sullivan with uh, wow. in, in a two man group called Aldo and Ray, and him and Shaggy Green. <laughs> owned a comedy club in New Orleans until they found a dead body in the green room. Yeah. He, this is all on all on the web. All True. On the web. And he used to send me manila envelopes full of crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. And uh, he, he had all these. And one of the first things he ever sent me, he, I, I answered everything. And he wrote me handwritten letters on, you know, yellow pad and pen, pencil. To the Stern show. He's a huge Stern fan. And I loved him. I, you know, when I started making a lot of money, I sent a couple hundred dollars to him. And him and Jackie Gale went out and had roast beef on me and they toasted me. And you know, I, I never even met Jackie Gale, but we we're pals that way. Wow. Wow. But yeah. We should he do a sent show. me a, he sent me a story called I Saw Milton Burl's Cock. And it's so funny. And it's a real, it's a real two-page, it really happened story. But I don't want to wreck it. I want to send it to you and have you read it live. On I'll be more than show. happy to. Be more than happy to. As a matter of fact, a show with all just the, the Borscht Belt comics would be great. Because I grew up and I didn't. Get, I kind of missed it, but I I didn't realize till I got older that I love shtick humor. <laughs> I love I love that type of humor. And and there was some really great mountain comics to this day. I mean, there's a couple of guys still around that are really great mountain comics. That you know, I love that they the when I was in Florida at the Fort Lauderdale comic strip, one of my first, the first times I was ever there, um, Freddie Roman came in mm -hmm. and he got up and did some time and introduced himself and how you doing? And he, I, I know he's from the Friars Club and I gave him a copy of my album. My album had just come out and I was in Florida, you know, selling my albums for five bucks a piece and all the other comics are making fun of me, of course, <laughs> until I got to be a millionaire. Then they stopped laughing. <laughs> And then years later, I got a gig at the Raleigh, and I'm working late night show, right? Midnight at the Raleigh, which is yeah, midnight, which is at one o'clock because they they get all the shows for free, and the late show on Saturday night, they've already seen three, four, five shows. They're so exhausted, they've walked they don't out want to do them. anything. So, and I'm dirty and loud and obnoxious. So within three minutes, the place is empty. But when I got there on Saturday afternoon, I saw Freddie Roman was in the main room and I was walking down to introduce myself and he was coming up the stairs. I said, Freddie, I'm Jackie Martling. I'm working up here. I was coming down to say hello to you. He says, I remember you. He says, the only guy I ever knew that handed me his own comedy album. And I was like, well, I never even thought of it like that. And then I told him I'd like to go to the roast and he brought me to the roast and Freddie Roman sponsored me for the friars and through him i got to wow. know him. 
Dick Capri and Stewie Stone. And all I love those, Dick and Stewie. I think they're great. Both of them are really great comics. Great, great comedians. I hope they're doing well in Florida. I don't know what's going on. They, they're both in Florida. I don't know. And I don't know. And how is, uh, well, he's still, isn't he still the, the uh, Friars, uh, president of the Friars? The uh, Oh, Freddie? Yeah. No, no, no. no? I, 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 Anymore? I, I don't know who is now, but the Friars, you didn't hear it from me, but I think it's completely kaput. It's kaput? Yeah. Yeah. You hey, know, uh, I'm not sure, you know, they had so many, there was like a perfect storm. A lot of stuff went wrong at the same time, but I don't want to talk out of school because for all I know, they're right, right there. They're sitting there right now playing cards and laughing. So who knows? No, I think they're closed right now, but I, I, I don't know what's going on. A lot of people left. There's been a lot of conflicts over there. Hey, here's another one here. This is Fort <coughs> Lauderdale gang, 1980. And I see Dennis Wolfberg right in the middle there. I don't know who all these other the, people The are. reason I'm not in the picture is because I took it. Uh huh. This is when I went with Rodney to Fort Lauderdale, and then we went to Las Vegas where he was headlining at the Aladdin. And my job was I flew down with Rodney's uh, daughter and her friend, and his son met us there and got everybody situated into the hotel. And then I went and picked up Rodney in the car, and I finagled such a great thing. I had never worked the comic strip, it had just opened. And we went to see Louis Nye. Do you know who that is? I know the name. From the Steve Allen show. Hi, ho, Steve Arino. Yes. You know, yes. Yes. Okay. So Louis Nye was doing a one man show, and Rodney said, Yeah, we're going to go see Louis. You know, Louis's my old friend. So we go to see Louis Nye, me and Rodney and his daughter and her friend and Brian. And I said, Why don't we go to the comic strip comedy club? And he goes, Oh, no. You think Louis will want? And Louis was all about it. So we packed into the car. We're trying to find the con. We wound up on Route A1A in 1980 at the height of Fort Lauderdale. It was so many college kids. If they hadn't noticed that Rodney Dangerfield was in the car, I mean, we're crawling on sure. A1A. But we got to the comic strip. And I'll never forget because I walked in and then behind me was Rodney. And then behind him was Louis Nye, and Paul Reiser's eyes literally popped out of his head. I am sure. And he turned to me and he said, you arranged this? <laughs> <laughs> so I, the devil got in my head, and I said to the guys, I said, why don't you all, it was Easter. I said, why don't you guys all come over on Sunday, come over the pool, and we'll hang out and have some fun. And I told Rodney's daughter, I said, hey, why don't I get the guys, to, you know, the, the girls were flirting with the guys, even though they were young, because they fell right. in love with the guys. They were all so funny. And I said, why don't we have a barbecue on Sunday? And so Melanie's like, yeah, that sounds great. So I went out and bought hot dogs and hamburgers and beer and everything we would need. And then Melanie said, Dad, why don't we have a barbecue? And he's like, okay. And Rodney came up to me. It's just so funny, John. And he said, yeah, you know, Melanie's thinking, you know, maybe we should have a barbecue, have some of the guys over. You know, why don't you call them up and... I'll give you some bread. You go get some stuff. And I just smiled at him and I said, I got all the stuff already. And I already invited the guys. He said, Oh, you motherfucker, you know. <laughs> so that was just before we went out poolside. Put the picture on. I'll tell you who's there. In those days, there were three comics at the comic strip, but nobody wanted to leave. And everybody came early because it was Fort Lauderdale at Easter time. So the three guys were coming in and three guys were going out. And I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't working. And so any combination of the six, this is Rodney's daughter, Melanie, her Which, friend, Debbie. Yeah. Well, it's reversed here. So Rodney's daughter, Melanie, is in the white or the white and blue? Uh, the white and blue. Okay. Cute then kid. next to her is Debbie, her friend. Uh -huh. The guy in the bandana is Brian Roy, Rodney's son. I didn't know that. Okay. Next is Paul Reiser. That's Paul Reiser? Wow. Next is Dennis Paul. Wolfberg. Next is Glenn Hirsch. Glenn Hirsch, I heard of, never saw before. But up my, on top I, is Bob Nelson, Larry wait, wait, Miller. Oh, damn, you're right. Larry Miller and Peter Bales. Holy shit! What wow. a fucking crew! And we sat around poolside wow. and shot the shit with Rodney and Louis Nye, and it was everybody to this day. They they still say it's like they died and went to heaven. I am so glad that I brought this photo up and you told me the names of those people. I'm and sorry. I thought you had seen that that picture a billion times. because No, no. And as a matter of fact, I'm looking at it now and I'm like, I, I didn't recognize Bob Nelson or I didn't recognize any of them until you tell The only person I recognize from that photo is Dennis Wolfberg. Who you I can't. Yeah. Know. You know, Helen Keller knows that that's Dennis Wolfberg. <laughs> <you know? laughs>
<laughs> That's cool. All right, back to the jokes. Hey, by the way, let me just check these comments over here. Yeah, people saying they, they everybody loves Dennis Wolfberg. He was Dennis Wolfberg was really hilarious. He was great. I love the way he used to like talk with one eye and he punched the the the, uh -huh. the punchline like that, you know, like a pirate. Great, really great photo. Great, great photo. Really, really fun. Yeah, you know the. I, I don't know. I it, you know the stories get too long and can kind of no, I'm, gone. Listen, dude, these this thing lives for air in the in the air forever. I mean, you De me, Dennis me, Wolfberg a parked his car uh, in Manhattan, where the car had to be moved by you know six o'clock in the morning, or they tow it. And I picked up him and Peter Bales to go to do a gig at the Ground Round in New Jersey, on way out. Way out with the peanut shells on the floor. I remember the ground run. And he said he was 80. so excited. He had just turned in his resignation. He quit being a teacher and he was going full time as of this day. So mm -hmm. he's all excited. And me, him, and Bales are on our way and my car overheats. Oh. And we're freaking out. We actually went to a house along the side of the highway and asked for some water. I mean, if you did that nowadays, you'd get shot. We got some water and got the car and got to the place, but the car was really in bad shape. We, we, uh, how we called there, I'll never know because there were no cell phones. And the girl said, we'll come get you. And I'm like, you know what? I hope the girl realizes that there was me, Bales, Wolfberg, and the microphone stand and my guitar and the, my, and the amplifier. You know, we were the show. We were the traveling show. And they came with a couple people in the car. It was, it was a clown car. But meanwhile, the waitress said, look, stay over my house and my brother will fix your car tomorrow. And I said, wow, it sounds great. But, but Wolfberg couldn't stay over because they would tow his car. So me and the waitresses were all drunk at the end of the night and we took Bales and Wolfberg and dropped them off where Route 3 breaks off from I-46 to Hitchhike at like 2 in the morning. Get out of here. And... I'm with the broads going home to the house to keep drinking. I just remember yelling to Wolfberg, welcome to show business. <laughs> <laughs> how was, what, how was know, Wolfberg as a person? How, he was a great, of, great, great character. Great, was he? He was a great character. I never met him. Hey, uh, uh, I, I, got, I got horrible stories, but, you know, but, but classic old time comedian story. And he died of colon cancer, did he not? No, he died of skin cancer. And it was funny because he was always tan. Whenever you saw him, even in the middle of winter, he'd go to Florida and stayed tan. He was always, always tan. It's like, you know what? If anybody's going to die of skin cancer, it'll be Dennis Wolfberg. And then he did. Well, tans matter in this world. Tans matter. Hey, Whatever you what do you think about Red Fox, Jackie? That's a good question. <clears throat> I love Red Fox. I sent you his introduction. Mm -hmm. It's in that. Do you have that file with all those names? I do. I don't think I have it available at this moment. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was in Red Fox's Dirty, Dirty Jokes uh -huh. with, uh, it was so great because, he, you know, he put out comedy albums, dirty comedy albums full great of jokes. Album. Great job. Great job. And I had all of them and I was so, you know, I used the same jokes. It was, it was great. It was so funny because there were these two little old lady jokes in the butcher shop that I put together, like as a medley because they followed each other logically. Right. And one day I'm listening to a fucking Red Fox album and he had put the same jokes <laughs> one after the other. And I was like, Son I of guess I know what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> so when we're backstage doing this show, he goes, yeah, Jackie Martin, I heard about you and your records. I heard about you. You know, because I was like the new kid on the block. Right. And Dice still says that that video launched him. Really? It was Dice was in it. Robert Schimmel. My um, favorite comic. One of my top 10 favorite comics. And uh, Robert Schimmel. Some girl that was Lenny Bruce's girlfriend and Red Fox's protege. Uh, I, I never think of any of their names. And, and Tim Thomas. It was, it was just, just great, you know. And uh, I was so thrilled to be part of it. It was like 1985, you know, like nothing to do with the Stern show, you know. And uh, it, it's great. So Sam Bash was Red Fox's best line. She was so ugly. She gave me a soft on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you say, Confucius say, crowded elevator smelled different to midget. <laughs> I still say all the time. He used to say, 
I swear to God, and three other white men. <laughs> and he said, I was in the service. I was in the service. One battle, I backed up so far, I bumped into a general. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, he says, do, this John says, do you remember the way, the weird way Red Fox would shake your hand? No, I never shook his hand. I don't know. No, I, I don't know if I ever shook his hand. I, I mean, I'm sure I did, but I don't remember shaking his hand. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I never met him in Perth. Shimmel was the breakthrough that routine about his daughter. Shimmel, I, I got to tell you, um, I, I don't, I mean, th- not, it, as comics, we s- stand around comedians with former comics. I mean, sometimes I remember the first night I worked with you back in Rascals and West, uh, that, uh, it was West Orange back in the day. We don't even watch you, the people don't even watch you, the Zach. You just go in the back of the room with the guy's doing his act. But you, no, nobody gives a shit. You, you're around it all the time. You just get away from it, kind of get your head in your own space, you know? And Schimmel was one of those guys to me that was able to take a dick joke and cleverly manipulate it into brilliance. Because I, I love the way he weaved everything. It was very, it wasn't like, you know, one, two punch joke. It was, but it wasn't a story either. It was always very cleverly. It's to me, I, the best way to put it, dick jokes in a clever way. And, right. I, and, and you know, with that underpinning of anger and frustration and, you know, he was, he was a good character. We were on the same bill in, uh, in 1993 at Just for Laughs. And uh, me and him got along really well because we were both filthy, you know. And uh, it, it, was, it was that 1985 Red Fox that was so early. God, I, you know, I would love to, I would love to see that. Hey, uh, that's, a, that's a good question too. So being, you know, this is a long time ago. As a, as a comic, is there any comedians that you really aspire or liked or inspired you when you're starting doing comedy? Anybody that you... That's I mean, your no, because I wasn't a comic. I had no no intention of being a comic. I was just a joke teller. I loved Red Fox because we used to listen to his albums, and the jokes that we didn't use already, we would uh, lift jokes from there. But I'd listen to Red Fox. I wouldn't listen to Robert. You know, we, of course, you get the Robert Klein album and George Carlin album, and you listen to them once, but you never listen again. You know, hmm. I had no intention of being a comic. I was just a guy that told. Dirty jokes and tr- was trying to sell his original music, which wasn't too good. Right. And then when I everybody bailed on me, I had nothing left except all these jokes. So I figured I'd tell the jokes on stage. So I figured out something else to do, and I never looked back. It just got better and better and better and better. You know, wow. it was funny because when I started, there were like 150 comics, and I was the only guy telling jokes. And then now there's 150 thousand comics, and I'm the only guy telling jokes, except for maybe Gilbert. You know, and uh, it was funny because when I first started doing it, you know, room, you know, the people in the city start hearing about you, you know, oh, there's this guy in Long Island. Yeah, he bought himself a joke book and tells jokes on stage. But then I started, you know, I from the very beginning, I was producing shows on Long Island like me and Richie did cinnamon. But I did shows in every barroom everywhere. And the guys would come out and the guys and girls would come out from the city because they'd get paid and they'd make you know, get their food and they'd make, you know, they'd make 40 or $50 instead of $7. Right. And they'd have a good time. And then pretty soon the word got around. Jackie's one of the funniest fucking guys in the world. You know, whether or not, whether or not you like his act, you know, he's a fun hang. And, uh, you know, so that stigma went away, but, uh, you know, I, it, it was just happenstance. You know, I, I just, I, I was killing with my jokes. So I made an album and I made another album, made another album. And I stumbled into Howard, you know, and the albums got me the gig, you know, they weren't good. They're not good albums, but I had an album. You had an album. And by the way, I'm getting a question. Fish is going, when did uh, Jackie stop recording his act on stage and why? I, the last, um, the last album I made was in 2010. And I was carrying this monstrous eight track, <laughs> you know, task cam and all the stuff. And I could barely do it then. Before these. And, and yeah, and I had uh, six comedy albums out, you know, 80 minutes each, which is like five hours worth of stuff. And I said, you know, I don't need another album. I don't need another album. You, know? you don't need too much to carry. So was Jackie ever bitten by the magic bug like you? You don't like magic. You're not into magic. You know what? I keep meaning to pull that out. One of the get out of here. One of the things when I was a little kid, I I had a grand scheme, man. I got a grand scheme. I sold cards, all occasion cards. I sold twenty boxes and then twenty more boxes, 
and got a Thunderbird movie projector. And then for my birthday and Christmas, I would ask for movies like a three minute movie or a 10 minute movie, you know, right. eight millimeter. Right. And I got a Sneaky Pete's magic set. Oh, God. That's, yeah. And I got the little printing press where you actually put the in the little letters and, right. you know, and I actually, I, I, I know I've sent you that my first flight. No, yeah. no, you've not sent me that. No. It's, oh, I'll show it to you next time. It's because I, I put on, and I had a puppet stage. Oh, that was the beginning of the whole thing. I had a puppet stage in my basement that we slowly built because the kid across the street had a hair lip and he was five years older and he had no friends because he, you know, he was so old that they worked on his hair lip with a, with a hatchet, you know. And we had so much fun. So we had a puppet show, a magic show, and Get movies. Here. And I made a little flyer. But it's so funny, John, because it says the show, and it says January, and then it's blank, comma, okay. 1959, in case there were multiple shows that month. I mean, is that the height of optimism? <laughs> Just absolutely crazy. And, I, uh, I, I'm surprised to hear this. I remember one night we were in Connecticut. Oh, having a, and I think there were three tricks in the thing. You know, yeah, but, I, you know, but I'm surprised that you're even into that. We, we, one night I was going to show card tricks. I think it was you and I and Ian were out having dinner. I think in Manhattan, and we were after one of the shows. And I remember you. Uh, I was pulling out a deck of cards, and you you go, I didn't give a shit about that stuff. You're like, ah, whatever. Yeah, I remember you're not really into like magic or anything at that time. But you know, it's it's fascinating. You know, all the guys are so good. You know, and uh, I I know I, the night I met Yogi Berra's son, I was so thrilled, and we're at some event. And there was this incredible magician there. I've told you about this before because you said you knew him. He he, he oh, works at that the little place, the, the long, thin place that has shows every Monday night mm -hmm. in Manhattan, whatever it was. And mm -hmm. he he's the guy who had the bent quarter trick that I'm still trying to figure out how the mm -hmm. hell they do it. And uh, but I yeah, it, it never flabbergasted me, you know. And it was always funny because it's one of the one of the many things that. Uh, one of the few things, rather, that I agree with Seinfeld on. And Seinfeld's like, magic, you know, you come out, you fooled me. Actually, the, asshole, you know. the Seinfeld's line was, here's a quarter, now it's gone, you're a jerk. That was the one. <laughs> yeah, dude, close enough, close enough. But it's, and it is fascinating. You know, I'll tell you, when I was in Las Vegas with Rodney, uh -huh. he took me to see Siegfried and Roy. And I had the best seats in the house. And so they were like, like the front semicircle was divided with like a runner, and then behind us was a uh, the semicircle, you know, maybe six feet wide, and then the rest of the crowd. And fucking elephants would run. A, I mean, this it was not that thick. I mean, if an elephant had a trip, five people would have died. <laughs> and we're sitting, and I, I like to think I'm a smart guy, and I'm sitting right there and right above us. He, well, he wasn't there. I, you know, I, he, I sent me alone. Right above me is a, a fucking glass case with a live tiger in it. And I mean, I couldn't touch it, but it was right there, a live tiger in a glass cage. Good thing and it was in a glass a cage. Sheet over it and pulled the sheet away. And it was the fucking girl in a bikini. And, his, and, and to this day, his arm to is this, gone. To this day, I uh, yeah, no, no, no tiger. I that you know. This is a death show. Hey, uh, Sam Ash says this. Speaking Schimmel, of death, do you remember what uh, Sam Kinison said about Siegfried and Roy? No, no. <laughs> yeah, man, they had all those white tigers. Hey. If those faggots were standing behind you, you'd turn white too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never heard that. That's hilarious. I never heard that. <laughs> uh, Sam Ash is saying, did Schimmel have a Fox series? <clears throat> and he's saying, uh, whatever happened to his Archie Comics musical? I'm not familiar with that. You're talking about, you're not talking about Schimmel. You're talking about me? No, I think I think with well, he's Sam is asking. Please ask this question. Everyone was talking about Mom, uh, Mal maybe Mabley, and uh, Sam is asking. It was pretty shocking, and he says uh, stuff was on because I really did start an Archie Comics musical. So, but I mean, it's not. It's I'm sure it's fairly common. Yeah, he's asking whatever happened to Archie Comics the musical. <clears throat> what happened was I was madly in love with this girl, and I got all these songs I wrote about her, and one of them is is the best song I ever wrote. 
Mike Reynolds. Do you know who that was? No. The juggler. He used to sing it in Fort Lauderdale. He'd just get up in the middle of Zach. He'd start singing. Uh, it's called Betty's tune. And it was Betty from Betty and Veronica singing to Archie because he stood her up again to go off with Veronica. And it really is a great song. I'll send it to you. You'll, you'll love it. And that's as far as I got. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I had a couple other songs I was going to, you know, I had a song about jogging. I was going to have Mr. Weatherby sing that. He was the principal of the school, you know, but I didn't get too far. But I, I used to actually introduce it as, you know, this is from my musical Archie. That's funny. He remembers that. Nobody remembers that. No, Jesus you, Christ. You'd be surprised. People remember things. It's like crazy. You'll hey, love I, the song. It's a great song. Let's go, let's go back to the dick jokes. I mean, death jokes. The death jokes. So a guy walks in the bar and he's all, his shirt's all torn up. His pants were all torn up. And the bartender says, where are you coming from? He says, I, I just buried my mother-in-law. He says, why are your clothes all ripped up? He says, eh, she wouldn't lie still. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's amazing. So I'll sit here and listen to these jokes, and I'm like, a lot of them I don't know, and I should know these jokes, and I don't know. I'm so glad to hear on video for future reference, you know? I love these. Guy, about the, guy, the guy gets a call from home. He, he's in, in Europe with his wife, and uh, he gets a call and he says, your mother-in-law just died. Should we bury her or should we cremate her? He says, don't take any chances. Do both. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? A woman goes into labor, right, and with a child, and the doctor says, hey, we just invented a new device that transfers the pain of the child birth to the father. So he asks, is it okay to do it and use the new device? And they say, sure. <laughs> they agree. So they turn the pain up to 10%. The, the father feels nothing. So they bump it up to 20%. He feels nothing. All of a sudden, he keeps doing it. goes up to 100%. He feels nothing. The man felt nothing. They go home happy until they see the milkman is dead on the porch. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that joke? Yeah, of course. Of course you do. Of course you do. Of course you do. The milkman being dead on the launch gives an indication of, of how <laughs> that's the way I heard the milkman. When's okay. the last time there was a milkman? You know? There's no milkman in this world anymore. Milk comes in now, now in little 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 suckers with little straws in them now. It's a whole new world. Hey, uh, what about, let me just show one of these other pictures here too real quick. Uh, here we go. <laughs> I, I'm not, we're not even taking anybody in here yet. There's a ton of people, I guess, to tell us jokes. I don't even know if people want to tell us jokes. I sent you a whole new version what do you see the new batch i sent you a new batch new batch okay it is such a who's who of it'll be funny you know it'll be funny i i will set it up next week we'll just flash them like three seconds each we'll do 25 of them see how many people can get some of them okay hit them up we'll do i actually i want to do the stuff on the uh the 60s and 70s the the bush belt comics I definitely, oh, all right so we'll I, save that well we'll do one of the a different day i just From love the, the desk of the sandman John and Jackie, if 2020 needed a narrator, Sam Kennison would be my choice. Absolutely. He's uh, been gone 30 years, you fucking moron. <laughs> Sam is a good guy. How does a magician turn a fruit into a vegetable with a white tiger? Oh. Oh, but it's good. It's still funny. Oh. So I'm looking at this. Uh, I, I love dark humor. I really do. I love dark I'll humor. You got to. You got to. So here, this, this Jackie puppet. I'm a ventriculist, so... I don't know who that guy is with the glasses. That the whole thing is that's the guy I negotiated with that didn't give me the money. Well, he oh. was the, he was just the uh, <clears throat> you know the the figurehead, <clears throat> but that's that's him signing the uh, Jackie puppets contract. <laughs> <laughs> that's that Jackie puppet is hilarious. Looking yeah, look, he's that. missing his right arm. That thing yeah. do a lot of shit. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's a nine two two wine t shirt. I see. Wearing. I you know. I see it. I definitely see it. And I also see him wearing sneakers that you'd never wear. No. no. That, well, just, where, where is that puppet today? Where is it? <clears throat> uh, I I'm sure it's somewhere buried in this. I, I, somebody told me it was hanging. In the studio, Howard's studio, up in the corner where nobody could see it. I, you know, I really don't know. That's funny. There's a whole big story about that. But right? Did it get stolen and disappear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back it, was, and some... it was all bullshit. It was all bullshit. Yeah, well, it was very, very. It was very funny. Very funny. All show, all show is bullshit. Now here's Je Oh, here you go. There's Pat. Now and there's a show. That was Albany. That was Albany. You and uh, 
And and by the way, Otto and George, what's interesting about Otto is he he looks screwed a little little wacky there. No, and he looks just, like he has a little weight on him. He was always a real skinny, thin guy, unless it's just a photo. Yeah, no, he, he went up and down. That that was at the Egg in Albany in uh, oh, 1990, maybe. Mm. So much fun. So much fun. Yeah, Otto was fun. great. Otto was so funny. The fun, comic's comic. Just one of the greatest comics. Dirty, <laughs> dirty, filthy, hilarious. Just awesome, awesome. There's another picture here. The monsters. What the hell is this all about? That's from the Channel Nine show. Uh huh. That's Robin, and that's the real Grandpa Al Munster, and Howard as uh, Herman, and then Fred as whatever his name was, and then Gary as whatever. I I I wasn't a TV guy. You know, they used to make fun of me because I didn't know any TV. I didn't know the Brady Bunch. I didn't know the Partridge Family. Really? I didn't know it. Why? I was older than them. I was already out getting drunk when they're sitting home with their mothers watching the fucking part. The Partridge family in 1976, I was swinging from the chandeliers playing rock and roll, you know? Wow, wow. But they all knew. Oh, remember this episode? Remember this, Jackie? Remember that episode? No. Oh, what were you raising a closet? I said, no, you guys were in the fucking closet while I was out living. You were out living. You were out living. Wow, that's hilarious. You know, it's funny because I know all those shows too. I, I wasn't swinging from the chandeliers either. I wasn't. Well, the truth is, that it's kind of an exaggeration because they were younger. Of course, if you're younger, you're sitting there watching it with your folks, you know. Yeah. Like five or 10 years younger, I'm sitting there watching, you know, the Red Skelton show and whatever, you know. <laughs> Jackie Puff looks like he's getting an enema. <laughs> yeah, because one hand is up his ass. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is funny too. I, I got this other picture here that I thought was interesting as well. I don't know what it says. Rodney's son Brian on it. Yeah, that's Rodney's son Brian. He was in the other picture. They, what happened? Me and Brian and uh, Melanie and her friend were all staying in the motel, and Rodney was in. Uh, no, maybe maybe Brian and Melanie were staying in the hotel. It was the Bahiamar, which was incredible. There was an overpass going to the beach. It was right on A1A in Fort Lauderdale. And I was in the little motel. Well, not so little, but the motel next door, I guess, for people that like had cars and families, whatever. And Rodney was in the But I, I think Brian might have been over in my room. And that was the maid, you know. And we're fooling around, you know. Is he's, this... in, he's a very nice guy. He's still around. You know, he's yeah, no, I, I never... Never heard. I never knew about him. I don't know what this means. Was poetic justice or just ironic that Trump died of COVID nineteen? Save this wouldn't be funny until next year. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's plenty funny right now. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what side of the fence you're on, right? <laughs> hey, did you read that uh, Lindsey Graham had his love hail handles removed? No, I did not. Yeah, now he's got no ears. <laughs> <laughs> I almost fell off the chair on that. I just almost fell off the chair. That's a good, that's a good one. <laughs> Tell Jackie I'm the guy who wrote the brother P Touch spots for the radio and Channel Nine show. That's very true. Sam is like uh, great when it comes to that, all uh, writing and creating things. Yeah, what the Sam would hand us a piece of paper and say, uh, "Brother P Touch," and me and Fred would take the ball. Come on, Sam. Is that what happened? I think so. <laughs> See, you know it. what? The truth is I have absolutely no idea. I'm just being a dick. You know, that's they, okay. they were big advertisers. They were? Yeah. Back in the day, back in. Hey, I mean, I have another picture here, too. I thought it was. Uh, well, let me, we'll take the one pictures more are fun, aren't they? I love the pictures, actually. And by the way, again, this stuff stays here forever. This goes in the air forever. You could drop dead tomorrow. This stays forever. And that's the beautiful thing about the Internet. You know, Don't and what we out. do wrong stays forever, too. Don't rule it out. Yeah, well, Professor Oren Corey once said, if I had any stock, I said no. He said, then you know it fluctuates. You have to buy it before it flux up. <laughs> He's great. He's one of the pictures I just sent you today. Uh, I got one here that I thought was interesting. This is Paul Giamatti. There it is. Where you go. That's Paul Giamatti being young... made up to play. Uh, what's his face? That's from Private Parts. Ah, oh, okay, of course. When he was uh, Pig Virus. What a great actor he is, too. He is a great actor. Yeah, he that really... was like his first, I think that was the first thing that he actually got. I'm sure he'd done lots of stuff and lots of theater, but that was the first time people actually got to know his name. And then he went to the moon. He, we, he... he had such a good time. We all had such a good time. When I run into him, you know, he's like, Jackie, I, you know. 
it's, he's it's a good guy. He's, he's a cool guy. He's very nice. You know, he was he was egotistical back then, but just actor egotistical. You know, it's a different level. You know, yeah, it's like, a different he game. He knows he's good, and you know, so treat him. You know, I get you. Treat, you know, it was look at this man. baby. Now this is great. Look at that. Great. That's great. That is uh, one of the great nights of all time. I'm sure. Have I told you that story? Of that no, night? no. That's Billy Joel and Carmen Apice from the Vanilla Fudge and Leslie West and me. And it was the Long Island Music Hall of Fame, the first award show ever at the Patchogue Theater. And me and Bob Buckman uh, co-hosted it. And <clears throat> everybody was there. Everybody was there. And I was so thrilled when I found out that Lil Anthony and the Imperials knew who I was and loved the Stern show. I was over the moon because I've been watching, you know, wrote, reeling to them since like sixth grade. And here they, they knew me and I'm thrilled. And everybody was in the show, you know, D. Snyder and Leslie West and, and anybody you can name. Anybody that ever flew over Long Island was admitted to the Long Island Hall of Fame, you know. Right. Um, but we were backstage <clears throat> and... I was in a conversation with Billy Joel, Paul Schaefer, and Leslie West. So the four wow. of us are just shooting the shit. Now, I'm in heaven, John. You would be, you, too. First you know, off, I'm like, a huge Billy Joel fan. I mean, just to sit right, there and hang out with plenty, Billy Joel. I mean, come on. You know, uh, Paul, and, and these guys are my peers. You know, I'm, I'm in the killer show. Where and you're telling them. dick jokes, I'm sure. Burying them. So, so I'm in heaven. And all of a sudden, I hear little Anthony. And we're standing in the wings. And they introduced Little Anthony and Imperials. And I'm like, this is Sophie's choice. One of the reasons I wanted to come to this tonight was to see Little Anthony. And here I am in this conversation that I wouldn't give up for anything. And all of a sudden, Billy Joel goes, hey, that's Little Anthony, man. And he turns around and he, and he wobbles the way he walks. He wobbles over to the wings. So I was like, fantastic. So I turn around and I wobble over to the wings. And me and Billy are standing there shoulder to shoulder. And 10 feet away, Lil Anthony and Imperials are crooning. And it's like, it's otherworldly, right? And in the middle of whatever they were singing, Billy turned to me and he goes, it don't get any better than this, man. And I said, what are you talking about? Good I'm Billy with Billy Joel. Joel. You're only with Jackie the Joke Man. <laughs> <laughs> How was, said, how was said, Billy Joel? Such an asshole. But how is how is Billy Joel as a person? Like he, he seems like he's a regular guy. I don't know him that one, but he's he's fine. He's nice. You know yeah. what I mean? He's like he, he's. I I know he likes to tell jokes, but you know a lot of people don't tell jokes when they're with me. You know, and sometimes they do. Me and Willie Nelson went back and forth twice today. Um, it's so funny. I send him all these horrible jokes, and then he he sends me the classics. You know, like you driver's know, here. Driving to the other side of, of town, if she finds a way home, don't fuck her. You know those. Yeah, classic videos. joke. Yeah. Uh, but I just love. You sent me one of his video audios of him <clears> telling <throat> you the joke, and I remember saying it was a great joke, but he didn't hit the punchline right. Like he's telling it like like he's reading it rather than telling the joke. You know, I thought yeah, it was pretty he, funny. Well, we I, we cut him all kinds of breaks. <clears throat> of but he's he's, a, he's a, just a classic, classic. All but right, that, we got we don't have much time. Back to the dick jokes. Before we leave, we got it. Before we get out of here. Uh, speaking of which, I'm looking here. I have a bunch of dick jokes, uh, not dick jokes, death jokes that I got. I put up here. Um, but I got, I got, I got, a, I got a quick one. Unless you got one, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. I'm still thinking. So Mick goes into court for double murder. Okay, this guy Mick he goes into court for double murder, and the judge says you're charged with beating your wife to death with a shovel. And a voice in the back of the courtroom yells out, <laughs> you, you fucking bastard. <laughs> you already know where I'm going. <laughs> the judge continues and he goes, you also are charged with beating your daughter to death with a shovel. And again, the voice in the back of the courtroom goes, you goddamn bastard. The judge stopped and looked at the man in the back of the courtroom and says, excuse me, uh, sir, I can understand your anger and frustration at this crime, but I, have, uh, I will not have any more of these outbursts or I have to charge you with contempt. Now, what is your problem? And the guy in the back of the room goes, and he stands up, and he says, for 15 years, I lived next door to that bastard, and every time I asked him to borrow a fucking shovel, he didn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's so joke. great. That's so great. Simple but fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, gotta, we only got a minute left. We're at 59 minutes. We're almost done here. Before, before we get out of here, 
Uh, next week we'll do one. We'll, we'll do one on uh, the the Porsche Bell comics. We'll call Capri and Stewie Stone and all those characters and see if they want to jump in. You know, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call. I'll uh, call them and ask them. Yeah. Uh, actually, I've been. I actually called a week or two ago and just left a message for Stewie and said, "How you doing? I hope you guys are well." I didn't hear back from him. I don't know what's going on. You know. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure everybody's all right. You know? I know. How about a dead dick joke? I know. So you so. A guy is is kneeling in front of a in front of a tombstone, and he's crying. He's going, "If only you had lived! If only you had lived!" And the guy comes up to him and says, "Who's in there? Your wife?" He says, "No, my my wife's first husband." <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful way to end that off. And if you want to see Jackie, you could have him come and make your custom video on cameo.com slash Jackie Martley. And we have to thank my talent booker here too, John Galasso at justlaugh.org. If you want love to you, Johnny. Please, if you can join this, if you want to get some jokes in the mail, email me, jokeland at AOL.com. J-O-K-E-L-A-N-D at AOL.com. PZ, I got to tell you, we kind of stuck to the stuck to our guns. We did a lot of dead jokes and funeral jokes, right? And we got some great stories. And but let me tell you, I I know a million jokes, but I enjoy some of the stories even more. So, Jack, again, this stuff lives forever. And guess what? I, there's some things you're telling me that I never knew before. If we you and I hang out and talk, we don't talk about that, right? No, no, we we, we don't get to everything, and and the pictures right. put you in a different place, which is so wonderful. Where do you see the I ones I sent? The, the pictures of everybody you've never. You know, it's a ridiculously eclectic thing. You can't scare me. I will see you next Monday with what? Jokes about the guys from the bush. The bullshit bush belt. You got it. All right. Next Monday, 8 o'clock. We'll see you then. Thanks a lot, Jackie. Love Stay you, Johnny. Warm. Love you back, bro. Have a good one. <laughs> I had, that was a lot of fun to me. It was good times. Well, I thought it was a good one. <laughs>